So what have we got today? Well, the mirror has splashed on Britain bursting into flames as we hit temperatures not seen since these islands were last covered by rainforests and giant lizards. The picture on the front there is of houses destroyed in Wellington, East London, as a grass fire marched up the back gardens. And inside, there's shots of Doncaster, Dartford, the Midlands, Hertfordshire, all dealing with blazes sparked by, we think, the heat. And Scotland, Scotland, uh, recorded its highest ever temperature as well. In London, meanwhile, the mayor, Sadiq Khan, declared a state of emergency because the usual 500 calls to fire brigades went over 2,000. Now, mercifully, so far, it seems there was no loss of life. Mikey, I know we don't have much of a government at the moment, but what were they doing yesterday? Because there seemed to be nobody on the news, no press conferences, no sort of general response to this. They were conspicuous by their absence. Uh, no, it was a very weird situation yesterday. Yesterday it was uh, a very quiet day for the government. Uh, I, I don't know how many of them were. I, I'm in Westminster today. I don't know how many of them were. Uh, but uh, I went to both of the uh, briefings and they were very light on uh, detail uh, from number 10. Um, uh, Boris Johnson chaired a cabinet meeting yesterday morning where apparently this did come up. Um, the you know the whole record uh, temperatures did did come up, but most of the cabinet meeting, as I understand it, was spent you know slapping his back, telling him how great a prime minister he'd been uh, because it was his last cabinet meeting uh, and, uh, before he steps down. Um, it, 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 the context in which it did come up was uh, in sort of congratulating the nation on not grinding to a halt. You know, it wasn't. Uh, it, it it was, as I understand it, he compared it to sort of the last days of COVID, uh, where you're uh, managing risk uh, as as far as things catching fire are concerned. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, it was it it was very light on detail and very light on intervention at least. But right. yeah. I'm not sure how the people of Wellington could really have managed the risk of their houses catching fire when it was a grass fire from outside that got their fences, got their lawns, got the trees, got the shrubs, then got the back wall and then took the whole house out. I mean, there's, you can't move the house a bit further back. That's, that's it. That's you. That's you done. You know, uh, it's not quite the same as washing your hands and staying indoors like we did in COVID. That's it. And, you know, you, you compare it to the responses uh, for previous things like flooding and, and there was a much more, sort of hands-on, get-involved response to, you know, sandbags being put out, things like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what, what the equivalent is for your garden catching fire, but there, would, well, there, there appeared to be... Not, not firing all the firemen would have been the good would start. Have been a start. Not shutting down fire stations and maybe making sure there were pumps and water cannon, things like that. On We, we got some water cannon, didn't we? Someone bought some water cannon <laughs> years ago. Yeah, I'm they went on eBay. That, that's the place that needs the water cannon, isn't it? Beside the A2 in uh, in Kent there, near Dartford. Look at the state of it. It looks Gosh. like flipping Australia. Mm. <sighs> well, the, 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 there were, of course, two Cobra meetings towards the end of last week, neither of which Boris Johnson turned up to. Um, they were uh, hosted by uh, the Cabinet on Office Minister... Kit Morthouse. name? Kit Malthouse. Uh, so, uh, such a such a high profile figure that his name briefly escaped me. Uh, <laughs> so, so yes, um, but in the meantime, they had a nice party at Checkers. Oh, that's all right then, isn't it? That does seem rather a bit like Boris Johnson's checked out already. Um, <laughs> and in fact, it? they had a barbecue as well, which you're not oh, allowed to do. Oh, they had a barbecue. This is the sort we weren't told not to have, right? Of course they did. Of course they did the opposite of what everyone else is told to do. Why is anybody surprised? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he had had sparklers as well. Now, Mike <laughs> says, will Johnson actually turn up at Prime Minister's questions today? Last week, he sounded pretty final. Obviously, if he does turn up today, Mikey, again, most of it's going to be backslapping and wah, 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 wah. My, will my honourable friend agree that he's been absolutely marvellous? He's going to want to go to that, isn't he? That's exactly what's going to happen. My understanding is, well, number 10 have been saying all along that he has no plans to skip uh, PMQs today. Whether that was true all along is, is is another question. But as we understand it, he is showing up today. He is in the country 
uh, and uh, he is turning up uh, at 12 o'clock today for his final PMQs, yeah. um, probably, you know, unless Parliament gets recalled over the summer or something. Yeah, well, I, I expect... Something could go very, very wrong, but no, I think it's not uh, I expect Keir Starmer might mention the fact that Britain's been on fire and the Prime Minister's not been anywhere. If he doesn't, he needs to kick up the bum. Um, but I'll, uh, the weather has broken in most places. Temperatures are falling, but they are going to go up again at some point. Uh, Grant Shapps, who for now, anyway, is Transport Minister, did say yesterday somewhere, he came out from the woodwork, to say it would take decades to replace all our infrastructure that melted or buckled with the heat yesterday. But our environment editor, Nada Fahoud, um, points out at the bottom of page three that this isn't just us. China has had three similar heat waves. Right down the bottom down there, you can't see it, but next to the fireman. Um, China has had three similar heat waves this year. The same has been seen across Europe, pretty much. And this is what happens, as Nada points out, at 1.2 degrees global warming. If we have two or three degrees global warming, she says it's going to be catastrophic. Now, the government went very, very big on climate change at COP26, which I can still remember. I don't think it was that long ago, Mikey. But many say it didn't go far enough in getting sort of international commitments to reduce carbon and so on. What's the, what has been the general overall thinking in Westminster about what needs to be done? What is being done? Have they done anything? I know we've got this psycho at the leadership, but aside from that, is there anything going on? Well, uh, nothing that's changed since COP26. Uh, the, the net zero target still exists and is, is the government target. Um, that hasn't changed. Uh, all of the three uh, leadership candidates, as I understand it, have committed to keeping that target. However, um, Liz Truss uh, has uh, made... Uh, a I believe Liz Truss has made a commitment to uh, reduce um, uh, the fuel taxes, uh, the the green levy on fuel, uh, which obviously uh, is is a big contributor towards uh, greenhouse gases. Um, aside from that, they're, they're they're talking about it as little as possible because um, climate change is not a big seller for the people who are going to put them in number you know whoever wins into number 10 it's mm. it's not a big uh talking point uh among the tory right wing um and it's really them that they have to talk to at the minute if if they want to if they want to be in the final two and if they want to be prime minister by the end of set well by the middle of september yeah now kemi badnock who left the leadership race she was talking about moving net zero 20 years into the future up to 2070 good thing she's not in it anymore because i don't think that would have gone down terribly well um now clive james says morning clive nice dog uh maybe the failing mirror could persuade china india russia america iran and many many others to cut down on their emissions instead of blaming the government of a country whose emissions are one percent i don't know quite why you've thrown iran in there i don't think they're the world's biggest polluter um, but yes, you're right. There are other countries doing worse than than Britain. Certainly, we're doing better than some, but we're also not doing as well as we said we would. And everyone does have to keep up their end of the bargain if it's going to work. Darren Bradshaw says, "Not that old chestnut. The one percent figure is only in our borders, not how we contribute globally, which is far more than one percent." As for China, they're leading the way in solar and electric vehicles. I think they're more far sighted than us. I seeing the benefits of net zero. Well done, Darren. You've done better than me there. Well, <laughs> Darren should be presenting this show. Don't need me doing it. Yeah, let, let's get Darren. I'm not sure I can add anything to that. <laughs> <laughs> Bring on Darren. But one point that Darren makes there, though, is that, and keep asking us your questions, everybody. Do you think Darren's right? Do you think Darren's wrong? Um, but, you know, there, there is a, a situation here where th there is something that's happening to the world. It's indisputable. Um, I was being taught, I could remember being taught the greenhouse effect at GCSEs 30 years ago. Right? This is established. This is not odd or unusual or new. Um, and so this is huge. If you're, if you're a capitalist who wants to make money and not waste your tax money on, on doing green stuff, then this is a great way to make money. 
and to get your businesses making decarbonized steel, um, doing solar panels, uh, making electric vehicles, all the rest of it, more solar panel funding. Um, that's the way that you create jobs, it's the way you make profits, it's the way the world is going to go. And if China is ahead of us on that point, then we're going to be lagging behind. We really need a government that says this is where we need to have like a, a green bias, I suppose, in every Whitehall department because the environment is going to affect levelling up, immigration, um, the food, rural affairs, everything, every single department, the health, every department is going to be affected by climate change. It's not just transport. It's not just a bit, oh, it's hot weather. This is generally going to affect every single aspect of life. And we don't seem to have a government that is across quite what they're going to do about it. But let's be fair, Labour has got Ed Miliband on the case. Absolutely. Now, he is the shadow climate change secretary. Uh, and he seems to be in charge of Labour's end of this in terms of opposition and, and putting pressure on the government to do better. But he, too, seems to have been pretty quiet of late. Um, apparently, he was out on the television yesterday. I didn't see him anywhere. But is he working hard, Mikey? And we're just all ignoring him because we're the awful mainstream media because he's at Miliband. Um, or is Labour a bit stuck for what to do as well? I mean, it's a bit of both. Um, uh, I, I know Ed Miliband was on telly yesterday because my partner, big Ed Miliband fan, uh, and never does he manage to get on the airwaves without me know about, knowing about it. But he was on the telly yesterday. Um, <laughs> I don't think necessarily... Um, uh, I, I don't think necessarily Labour's uh, sort of lack of sort of uh, plan on, on climate change is necessarily restricted to climate change. They are keeping their powder dry on a lot of issues. Um, because they don't want to be sort of tied into things before they've you know got their manifesto down and before there's an election in in, in the near future. Um, aside from that, that you know they're, they're they're sort of behind the net zero target. They're you know they they kind of push the, over the years they've been pushing the government to go further, uh, and the government has, has has occasionally borrowed a few ideas from Labour. But yes, no, it, it it's. Uh, it, it, it's a fairly quiet time uh, for for everyone involved, uh, which yes. is unusual given the, uh, the circumstances. Yeah, not ideal, probably. Now, get into the comments, everybody. Let us know your questions. Do you think the government should be doing more? Do you think the government's done enough? Do you think green levies and green taxes are the way forward? Or do you want to have some kind of subsidy and stimulation instead? Or do you want both? Um, what do you think Labour should be doing? They kind of have to wait until their manifesto gets written. Their manifesto gets written by a committee nearer the election. It's not about to happen anytime soon. And they can't really go out telling people what their big ideas are because otherwise the Tories nick it, as we've just heard. So they're a bit stuck as well. So what can we do about all this? It does seem a bit grim, especially if we're getting fires uh, rampaging across the countryside.